For a movie being labeled as a direct sequel to the first 12 rounds, Reloaded feels like it's just a remake. Either that or we're going down the route of the Final Destination franchise, where everything is a sequel but not directly connected to the prior films. Also, with a film title like Reloaded, it makes you wonder why they didn't just bring back John Cena as Danny Fisher who gets caught in another 12 rounds game by, let's say, the father of Miles Jackson who seeks revenge after his son blew up in that helicopter. Here's a nice wide open shot of the beauty that is Vancouver. Get used to the sight because the rest of the movie looks like it takes place in a dark alley, even in the bright shots. Going to the movies with you because you're it takes about 15 seconds from the moment this conversation begins to the moment the editors forgot to switch to the right camera because we're still looking at the city here. One chick flick every 12 months isn't going to kill you. Unless it's Twilight. Also, why force his husband to watch a chick flick with her against his will cliche? Word of advice, if someone tries to force you to watch things you're not interested in, tell her it's been fun and run like hell. Next time you get to choose. Bullshit. The director figured that we should not show the actual car accident and instead hear the collisions to save budget costs. Also, with the way both cars were drifting and slowing down, there is no logical way that it results in both vehicles being flipped upside down. I mean, look at this shot. How did the vehicle on the left manage to not only land on its side, but also move backwards away from the upside down car? Worst case scenario, one or both the cars would have hit a pole at least, not this. Weren't you able to enter the car from the other side when you initially checked on her? Why not just go back around and get her out from over there? Instead, Nick figures all hope is lost because the driver's door is stuck. I get that we needed that sad dramatic shot of our protagonist covering the body of someone who had just died, but that's your own leather jacket. This ambulance suddenly didn't have a body bag or anything? Apparently, it was explained that Nick is shook up because he has never seen anybody die throughout the years of him being an EMT. And here I am questioning, how? On the whereabouts of Governor Thomas Devlin. News important to the plot later is shown on the TV oblivious to anyone's eyes cliche. They always seem to do that. You think they haven't made mistakes? But you're not that guy anymore. Sarah hints at a far more entertaining movie than the one we actually get. It seems this film would be a lot more interesting if it had been about Nick in the aftermath of that accident. I'll uh, owe you one if you come with me tonight. Bullshit. The way Nick thinks twice before choosing to drink his orange juice just on the very case that Sarah spiked it. Man, white people do not lock their doors. This film would have been canceled immediately if the races were switched. Don't mind if I do. Yeah, well, you gotta time. share with okay. your partner. There's a difference between sharing your food with your partner and your partner trying to straight up steal what's in your hand. In my experience, you can have some of what's on my plate, but the moment you touch what's in my hand, it's no holds barred. I presume, of course, Nick and Jay had other things to attend to throughout the day, but from the looks of things, all they did was drive around the entire city from morning to night. So what exactly were they late for? Dispatch, this is Unit 01, we are in route. When you think about it, one year's preparation and the entire game of 12 rounds had to begin with a stroke of luck, because Heller had to call 911 and hope to God that the one ambulance that would show up to assist this guy with a bomb in his stomach was the one that contained Nick, the guy he wants to play the game. Could you imagine if this didn't work out because another ambulance on patrol showed up to the scene? <laughs> this guy had enough energy to say that our bad guy wanted to talk to Nick, but didn't once warn either of these guys, Yo, there's a fucking bomb stuck inside of me. Get the fuck out of here before it blows up. You hang up on me and Sarah dies. It later turns out that Heller doesn't even kidnap Sarah until much later into the 12 rounds game, which once again shows that he's relying entirely on luck that his plan will work. Could you imagine if Nick gave a signal to Jay to call Sarah's phone, who then revealed to be safe at her house? Heller'd be like, well shit. This movie overdoes it with a dramatic reveal of who was behind the entire game. Shot at the back of the head? Check. Reflection on the ground? Check. Blurry silhouette to cover his face? Check. Distant shot of his partially visible body? Check. Big wide shot revealing his face in a dramatic fashion? Check. Now this game has 12 rounds. Nick doesn't immediately say, huh, that sounds awfully familiar to what happened to that one police officer in New Orleans a few years ago. You win more than you lose, I turn myself in. Bullshit. Jay, get out of the ambulance, now! What? Seriously, this asshole is the most unobservant I've ever seen. The object inside the patient just turned on and started buzzing like it's about to explode. His partner yells at him to quickly get out of the ambulance and he responds with a slow, huh, what? And when he eventually does get out of the ambulance, he just stands there instead of running to Nick who's continuing to desperately yell at him to get out of there. Sorry, but he deserves what's coming. Jay just got blown up and set on fire, yet he somehow survives this. I am so confused about everything right now. I don't know what this is all about, but... Nick figures that Heller can only see him through the security camera, so why doesn't he send a secret text from under the camera or something? 
or pretend to be helping out Jay's unconscious body with his back to the camera. And don't sound so fucking suspicious like you're stalling for time. You send that text and Sarah is dead. Seriously, why are we still hiding this guy's face? It's not like he's being played by some massive Hollywood actor or another WWE superstar. But trust me, if I wanted him dead, he'd be dead. Okay, but what if he did die from the incineration, or if the force of the ambulance's explosion caused him to die? I swear Heller is one of the worst villains I've ever seen. Rule number one, no fucking cops! I mean, an ambulance just exploded and you got no control over the cops being called by some random pedestrian, so yet another flaw in your plan. <laughs> Holy shit, there he is! Who the hell are you supposed to be? What? You literally just said let's play the game and sent Nick the car location like 25 seconds ago. How did round two begin two minutes ago? Not one of these cop cars chased down Nick despite him clearly being in their sight as he runs away from the scene. There is no way in hell that Vancouver is this deserted, especially since it's not even that late at night and stores are open. And even if it was, a massive city like that with millions of the population wouldn't be this deserted so that any running asshole can stroll onto the streets without a worry of a car coming at him. Right. I agree, that is not right. What business is only open to the public for two hours a day? Round three. Another one of Heller's dependence on luck, because those matches could have easily fallen out when Nick dropped it. Then he'd look inside, see maybe one match or no matches, and say, nope, not this thing. <laughs> Heller said rule number one was no fucking cops, yet he gives Nick so little time to complete his tasks that the latter resorts to speeding and reckless driving, which of course would cause the cops to be called or pull him over. You get back in that fucking car! I swear to God, I will blow that car up right now! Nick, if I wanted you dead... Wait, so first it was get back in that fucking car or I will blow it up right now, and now it's I don't want you dead. Getting mixed signals here. Seriously, how is there not one single cop in the entire city who notices this? Ah yes, the old car bumper falls off in a comedic fashion after a speeding chase is over trick done in so many action films. Of course. You have to ask the right questions. Another moment of Heller relying on luck. A hotel with so many different rooms, Nick having to figure out what questions to ask, all while there are bombs rigged everywhere. And Heller has a big master plan to get everyone involved in the game. If this car bomb blows up, his plan is screwed. You cannot convince me in any sort of way that Heller accurately predicted that this guy would conveniently be wearing a shirt with a number 4 on it right in front of his keys. I get that Nick saves the day at the end of the movie, but um, he causes so much damage to property and people throughout the film. And you mean to tell me that the law is just going to forget all about that? Discount Olivia Benson. All the rooms on the fourth floor are starting in the 400s like any normal hotel would. And then you conveniently got room number 44, which doesn't have a zero on it. Hey, well, can't you read this sign? <laughs> that interaction was a funny piece of comedy. Tommy asks Nick if he read the sign, to which Nick reconfirms that it says, Please disturb, with a smiley face covering the word don't. Threesomes. Holy shit, another massive rely on luck when you look at this. Heller rigged this hotel room with his cameras and hoped that this one night when he launches his plan is conveniently the same night where Tommy, the one guy needed to go to the next round, decides to hook up with a prostitute in this exact hotel room at this precise location at this precise time. Could you imagine if Tommy decided to go somewhere else for the night or just stay home? What am I supposed to be looking for? I'm actually shocked that Nick needed the hint that Tommy is the one item he needs to bring with him. Wouldn't breaking into a hotel room with someone in it make it obvious? <laughs> You've gotta be freaking kidding me. Was the smiley face Heller symbol or inspiration on Tommy's tattoo? Or did Tommy get the tattoo because Heller disguised himself as a tattoo artist to get that face on his arm while Tommy was passed out drunk? I got so many questions. You wanna do this again? I don't, but he does. So, did the receptionist call the big security guy and tell him to hide in another hotel room just so we can make this dramatic reveal? That had to be an awkward exchange. Clue to the next round. Next round. Couldn't Nick just tell Tommy that some person is threatening to kill his wife if he doesn't play this crazy game? It would at least make 5% more sense than he's making right now. This is a police station that's active even during the night. You mean to tell me that this place has no overhead lights and they gotta rely on a few lamps? Why is it so fucking dark in here? And also, why is it so bright outside in the middle of the night? I didn't kidnap you. That's not what it looks like from where I'm sitting. Nick is saying literally anything except an explanation for why he's bringing Tommy along for the ride. Congratulations, Nick. That's another one of your calls. Um, that's not how car phones work. Nick didn't even call Heller, nor did he accept an incoming call. And since the car was turned off, Heller couldn't have called the vehicle and waited for however long because the connection would have been lost. That sound like something an EMT could do to you? 
Guy's gotta have a hobby. Man, even I know this asshole was in on the plan because of his constant excuses to direct all attention toward Nick. This car right here is clearly approaching Nick and Tommy, but in the next shot, there is no indication that a car is passing them. No change of lighting, not even the sound of a passing car. Then in the next shot, it's completely gone. Jeez. Jump scare attempt failed. Oh my god, baby. Nick immediately thinks that this lawyer is actually Sarah, completely forgetting that Heller told him his wife would remain alive, otherwise he would have no reason to play the game. You like what you see, Nick? Wait a minute, earlier Heller couldn't find Nick and Tommy because he has no cameras in this area. Where'd you go, Nick? But now all of a sudden he knows they opened the trunk and found the dead lawyer? They were not even on the line when they found her. Laws need to be enforced, Nick! So watch me completely enforce those laws by not enforcing those laws and causing more damage than any other criminal ever could. I get that this is a shitty hotel, but even the shittiest of hotels have working light fixtures in their hallways instead of what looks like a giant spotlight shining into the window. Or is that supposed to be the sun out at nighttime? You know, I have to admit, I thought you'd be dead by now. Then what would you have done with the rest of your plan if Nick was killed at any point? Try again another year later? This is the place I had my, my crash. Tommy instantly recognizes the location as the one where he had his crash a year prior. But considering he was driving while severely intoxicated, and the crash happened out of nowhere, along with the fact that he was mostly lying down and taken to the ambulance, how would he recognize this place? It's not like he was frequently taken there as part of his rehab or anything. Hell. Bullshit! You never even so much as looked at Heller after you pulled him out of the wrecked car. Just saying, I saw the intro like everybody else did. How can a guy just take the law into his own hands? But you can bend it to avoid paying for your crime? Nick Malloy would be great at CinemaSins 2 expansion. This is all because of you. Which makes me wonder why Heller didn't select Tommy as the guy to play the 12 rounds game and instead picked an EMT that actually tried to save his wife. Also, and I don't mean to endorse violence here, but wouldn't it have been simpler for Heller to just, I don't know, find Tommy and kill him right on the spot instead of rigging this entire game based off of nothing but luck? People are dead because of you! Because you didn't want to pay for what the fuck you had done! Politics. If you had just let him die, none of this would have been necessary. None of this still wasn't necessary because like I said before, the real culprit of this whole thing is Tommy, who you could have just hunted down and killed immediately. Her job was to save her. Nick's job was to save any injured person, and sometimes people die despite the best efforts of an EMT. Honestly, by now, Tommy realized that Heller is the true enemy of the situation, and Nick is actually on board to finishing the game and taking Heller down. So why run away now? Also, Tommy thinks he can outrun Nick, who managed to catch up to him while fighting a big security guy earlier. Did he just forget about that? What do you mean you can't find him? You know, I'm actually surprised that Sarah doesn't try to call Nick herself after being informed of the situation by the police. You have got about six minutes before every cop in this city. But I thought rule number one of your game was no fucking cops in all caps. Now you deactivated the signal block to ensure the police find their location? Do you not want cops involved or do you? Okay, even if Nick survives this game and succeeds, he is definitely going to jail because no matter what your motives are, if you beat up a cop and abduct their vehicle for any reason, you're fucked. Seriously, how does Nick get away with all of this without any consequences whatsoever? Don't give me that, it's a movie bullshit, because this ain't some movie where laws just magically disappear. Moments ago, there were cop cars all over these assholes, but they suddenly disappeared like magic just so we can have this failed attempt at a laugh moment. Show me your hand! So, what would Heller have done here if Nick and Tommy ended up turning themselves in and getting arrested? His prime suspect and his game pawn have been taken off the board, now what do you do for the rest of your 12 rounds game? At least Miles Jackson knew what he was doing with Danny Fisher. Nick manages to evade the cops by going up a parking garage. Congratulations, how the hell do you expect to take down the police from up there? Whoa, where the fuck did you come from? You were nowhere near the door in the previous shot, much less pulling it open. <laughs> Wait, judging by the laugh, did Heller actually hope that Nick and Tommy would get captured by the police at this point in the game? So much for the justice he hoped to get in their deaths if that's the case. Your dad's the governor. That's how you got off. Fuck politics, am I right? She's uh, safe at home. There's a unit watching her. I'm actually surprised Nick didn't immediately request that Sarah be taken to the police station by the officer watching her so that she could be safe from Heller potentially kidnapping her. But of course, like the rest of this game, Heller got lucky again because Nick is told Sarah's at home and then proceeds to move on like there's no chance of her being kidnapped. There were police cars literally everywhere around this building, but when Nick and Tommy escape, no sign of police cars anywhere, and they weren't told of what Mackenzie discovered, so the fact that these two still get away is bullshit. Heller leaves to kidnap Sarah after spending nearly the entire game hoping that Nick wouldn't find a way to get her to safety. You could have kidnapped her immediately before the game so that you wouldn't have to rely entirely on luck. He was the valet at the club where Tommy partied the night of the accident. How the fuck 
What hell or know that? How the fuck did he even know what bar Tommy partied at on the night of the accident, much less who was working as a valet that night? So the governor has been missing for two days, and it was known that he used to run this abandoned sugar factory. Reason I call bullshit is because locations the person was well known for are usually searched in missing cases. And if he's been sitting in a pile of sugar this whole time, he definitely would have been found before now. You didn't really think it was gonna be that easy, did you? Nice dramatic turnaround, but Nick doesn't have his phone on right now. You are literally talking to nobody. The most infuriating part about this scene is the fact that Tommy and Nick are quickly digging through the sugar when they could have, you know, grabbed the governor and pulled him out of there. I know he's strapped to a chair, but you could have still gotten him out of there. <laughs> Hold on a second. Did the machine just shut off all of a sudden? All Nick did was place the tractor underneath a shower of sugar and then somehow turned the damn thing off? That's not how factory machines work. Heller has his gun pointed at Sarah in the first shot, but then his arm is suddenly pointed to the ground in the next shot. Also, why doesn't Heller just shoot Nick and Tommy right now? They're literally the last two people left that he wants revenge on. Might as well just finish the job right here, right now. I know it's kind of a risk, but Sarah could totally just kick Heller below the belt and then use her tied up hands to push him over the edge of the rail, to which he falls to his death. Happy ending, Sarah is the hero. In order to get the charges reduced, they had to bury evidence. Look, if Heller figured out that the police destroyed evidence to get Tommy's sentence reduced, then fine. But how the fuck did he know that it was the one police officer who was conveniently the first one on the scene when the crash happened a year ago? Could have been the second, the third, or someone who wasn't even there. There is literally one second, one second left on the bomb timer and somehow Mackenzie here was able to not only survive it, but run out of the room and out of range from the bomb within that time. That is honestly worth 100 sins if you ask me. Okay, obviously the one who destroyed the evidence didn't survive, but damn, that was a massive explosion and everyone else somehow survived it? Not to mention the building itself survived it? A bunch of too much zoomed in flashbacks to a party that I don't even care for. I want my wife back! I swear to God, I do not endorse this, and you shouldn't either. But it really seems the only logical thing he could do to bring his wife back is to join her, you know? Not saying he should, but let's be honest, that was always gonna be the end result of his game no matter the winner. Pick your poison. Haha, ha, fuck you. <laughs> now, obviously, Heller was gonna kill Tommy regardless of the correct drink, but Tommy is such an idiot who really deserves it here. Why laugh like a villainous maniac in front of the guy whose wife you killed in that accident? Did he actually think he was going to live? Of course, it wouldn't be a destructive death scene without the villain walking away from the explosion. Oh, the cliches of action thrillers. The system is broken, and it can be manipulated by those in power. Does Heller actually think that the system is going to repair itself all because he played this game? Just like any situation, politics will continue to ignore those negatively affected by their choices and continue to make their countries live in hell. It's life, unfortunately. Go fuck yourself! That is exactly what I intend to do. Heller is an asshole, but that is without a doubt the best comeback to someone telling you to go fuck yourself. Embrace it and laugh it off. In this final battle, there is no way you can convince me that throughout all the struggling and fighting, this car managed to stay on the road and get to the intersection at the right moment the bomb eventually goes off. Guy says the name of his deceased love before he ultimately gets blown to bits by a bomb cliche. Seen that in a lot of action films. Congratulations, you saved the day! Now, you are under arrest for multiple counts of vandalism, assault on civilians, assaulting police officers, committing grand theft auto on police vehicles, and fleeing the scene. Hands behind your back!